Good morning. As we begin our worship experience here. Good morning. Welcome to Glenside United Church of Christ this Sunday, October 10th, where we worship in spirit and in truth. I'm Reverend Kim Kendrick. I proudly serve as the interim pastor here at Glenside, where no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you, 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 yes, you, 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 and yes, you, you're welcome here. And we're so glad that you're here. We are about to begin our worship experience with our prelude. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you so much to our awesome praise ensemble, yes? Can we give it up for our praise ensemble, yes? Doing an awesome job. We have Judy on the piano, we have Mike on the guitar, and Emily on the drums. We thank you so much to our praise ensemble. Thank you so much. I believe that Pastor Ann Therese is out today, yes? I just want to confirm that before I step on toes. And so, you are stuck with me, Pastor Kim, for your welcome, yes? For your welcome, I want to make sure that I welcome each and every one of you as we stick to our welcome. Welcome, officially welcoming you to Glenside United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And so, if you're home, if you're virtual, whether you're in your living room, your dining room, your bedroom, in your car, type in the chat to each other. Do me a favor, those that are here in the sanctuary, rise to your feet as you are in either body or spirit. Stand, greet each other in the sanctuary. Type in the chat, hey, everybody. Wave to the folks. Say, hey, how are you doing? Turn around if you can. See each other's eyebrows over the mask because you're welcome here. This is where we have the opportunity to go ahead and stretch out and say hello to everyone. There you go. People are saying hello to each other in the chat. I see you, Graham. Yes, hello. It's good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, Catherine. It's good to see you. We want to also say thank you to Ada for serving as our digital hospitality host. Thank you so much to Andrew that's coming forward right now to serving as our worship leader. Thank you always to our tech team. I see that Jess is up here serving on the camera. Thank you to Sherry. Also, thank you to KD. I see also part of our tech team. Thank you to each and every person. Also to our hospitality host as well. 
Thank you for being here at Glenside United Church of Christ. Andrew. Please join me in the call to worship. For those in the sanctuary, the second response was not printed in the bulletin, but should be viewable from the screen. Faith never comes easy. Thomas, a faithful disciple of Jesus, doubted the post-resurrection appearance and needed to see Jesus for himself. How we are like Thomas. We sometimes think we need to see in order to believe. How blessed are the ones who, never having seen, yet have come to believe. Open our hearts, Lord, to this faith in you. That although we may not have seen the risen Christ, we may believe fully in him. We confess that we far too often want proof for everything, O oh Lord. We want proof that someone loves us. We want proof that we can trust in others. We want proof that everything in life is going to turn out all right. It is easy for us to point our finger at Thomas, who was honest about his fears. He had seen so much healing and hope, but those hopes seemed dashed when Jesus died. Even the news of the resurrection had not completely lifted the darkness from his life. Jesus said to him, just as he says to us, peace, be still. Do not doubt, but believe. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Forgive the many times when we think and act in ways which are hurtful and mean. Heal our wounds. Bind up our spirits in the cords of your compassion. Help us to fully place our trust in you with our whole hearts and minds and spirits and souls. For we ask this in your blessed name. Amen. Peace, be still. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus came to bring you new life. Believe in him. Receive the blessing of hope and peace. Amen. Sunday, second Sunday, is always Celebration Sunday, 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 Sunday. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> um, Celebration Sunday, an opportunity where we celebrate ourselves, right? And Celebration Sunday came out of the fact that I know that a lot of us, we sit in front of whatever uh, news outlets that we have, right? whether it's our flat screens or whether it's our small screens, whether it's our actual pieces of paper that we take a look at. And we go through and we see so much news, so much things that come into our ear gates, our eye gates that is like eh, womp womp. That is an opportunity just for this moment here on this during this time to celebrate. So let's celebrate each other, yes? And we start out Celebration Sunday with birthdays. Are there any October birthdays? Yes, yes, yes. Any October? Hey, October birthdays. Yes. Any, uh, yes, any other. Somebody needs to help me out also with the chat. If there are anybody, anyone in our virtual world that says, yes, they have any October birthdays that we want to celebrate. Any other October birthdays? So for all of our any other, Chardé, yes, there's a birthday, yes. Thank you, Star, for lifting that up, happy birthday. So any other October birthdays, October birthdays? No? So let's do this. On the count of three, everybody, let's wish them a happy birthday. We're gonna shout happy birthday, right? Virtually, everybody online and everyone in person, we're gonna shout happy birthday on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yes, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, and happy birthday, happy blessed birthday. Any other celebrations we want to lift up? Any house closings, any retirements, anniversaries? 
anything, again, in our Zoom room, live in the sanctuary, any promotions, sobrieties, any divorces, breakups? I believe when one door closes, it happens for a reason. Halloween, yes, yes, yes. That's a good reason to celebrate, yes? Yes, some folks have off on Monday. Yes, I said some folks, yes. Some folks have off on Monday. That's a good reason to celebrate. I know my kids, but I'm not celebrating. But yes, my kids are off on Monday. Anyone else? Well, again, we want to say um, this is a great opportunity to celebrate. We see you. We see you. We appreciate you. And we celebrate you on this Celebration Sunday. It's so good that you are here with us. Amen and amen. As we continue our worship experience, we have the hearing of our word, which comes out of the Gospel of John. If you will rise as you are able in spirit or body. Our text comes out of the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 through 29, and it reads as follows. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the 12, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Jesus said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, come here. Put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand in my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responds to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of God. You may be seated. This is also the time in our worship experience where I have an opportunity to talk to all of our youth, all of our young folks, whether or not you are virtual or here in person. Are there any youth in the sanctuary? Maybe? No? Any? Yes! I see you, Malachi. Yes. Any youth? Maybe? I know, Barbara, you didn't try to... Were you, were you raising your hand? I was about to say the adults. I, I see Josh and Zoe. Yes, yes, yes. I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I see our youth. Yes. And I see you online also. Thank you. Thank you. So let me ask you this, because it's been a minute since I've actually been been in a classroom, right? So they've all they're sending all of my classes on the Zoom and they don't do this too much in my classes. When you're in school, what's one of the very first things you do when you get to class? What's one of the very first? Now, besides for putting your coat or jacket up, maybe in your cubby, besides for putting your lunch away, what's one of the very first things that maybe your teacher does when you get to school? Go ahead, Zoe. <laughs> what's one of the things besides for saying good morning? Yep, go ahead. Somebody has their hand up? You put your bag away, exactly. Yep, put your bag away. Anything else? What's one of the first things that maybe your teacher does when you get to school. Anybody type in the chat and somebody let me know what the chat says. What's one of the first things that your teacher might do when you get to school? Go ahead, again. Yes! Thank you for helping me. Yes, yes. Take attendance, yes? So you're right. So I know when I'm at school, and probably a lot of you, when you get to school, your teacher takes attendance, right? And so your teacher might call out people's names, right? And say, John, and you might say, here. You might say, Mary, here. You might say, Cynthia, here, or present, right? And the teacher goes down what's this called this role, right? Some people might say it's roll call, but taking attendance, right? 
so that people raise their hand or people out of their mouth say here or they say present, yes? And that's so that the teacher can mark off and say that yes, they were there. And it's also so that if somebody misses something, if they miss an assignment, that the teacher can make sure that they get that assignment. They know that work that's being done so they don't miss a beat, that they're on par, that they know what's happening the next day and the next day, right? The Bible verse that I read was about Jesus and one of his followers named Thomas. Somebody say Thomas. Thomas wasn't present on this one day that Jesus had died, he was crucified, and Jesus, he rose from the grave. And the disciples, his followers, his BFFs, they were locked up in this room. They were afraid. They locked themselves in this room, scared. And Jesus appeared to him, to them, all 12. But Thomas wasn't there that first time. And when Thomas, the next day, was told by the disciples, he didn't believe. Thomas was like, no, nah, that didn't happen. And they were like, yes, it did. Thomas was like, no. And they were like, yes, it did. You weren't here. When Jesus was trying to take role, you weren't here. A whole week went by. Jesus showed up again. And when Jesus showed up for the second time, Thomas was like, what the what? Right? And then Jesus said, come on, put your hand here. Touch, touch the holes where they put the nails. Put your hand here in the side where they, they, they pierced my side with a sword. And once Thomas saw, he believed. Jesus said, I really don't want you to have to touch hands and touch the side to believe. What Jesus wants you and I to do, specifically our young folks, is to have more of a conversation and relationship to believe. And then to do the good works, good works such as helping out family, helping out friends, being a good person inside, and again, having the conversation, the relationship to be a believer. And not someone like Thomas that says, I've got to see it first. Let's pray. Loving God, we pray that you give us the strength and the courage to believe you as we reach out and have stronger relationships with you. Help each and every one of us on each age level to have a stronger relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I'm sorry, I thought there was a uh, sound with that. Amen, amen, and amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. Ida, if we can have the slide still up, please. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. To break every chain, break every chain. Judy, I praise God and thank you for your ministry. Amen. Amen. Has everyone been blessed? I know I've been blessed by our contemporary music on second and fourth Sundays. Amen. I want to give it up for our praise ensemble once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. To break every chain. And hope is here, y'all. Hope is here. Hope is here. Hope is here. Today is the final week in our series, Hope is Here. It has certainly been an encouraging series and an encouraging uh, time as we gather as a church and uncover all the ways that we find home and hope in our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with one another. Will you join me in prayer? Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, I wanna thank you for all that's been seen and said, pronounced and proclaimed. As we approach this preaching time right now, dear God, please settle our hearts. Settle our hearts and minds right now. We thank you for this privilege of your presence on this platform. Open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear, open our hearts that we might receive what you say to us today. We thank you for this holy assignment in this sacred space. Be with me, your servant that humbly takes on this task. Allow this to be all about you and nothing about me. I pray this prayer in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Hope is here. Hope is here. The first week, family, we learned that there is hope for the weary. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? The first week, for those that are following the series, the first week we learned that there is hope for the weary. During our second week in our Hope is Here series, we discovered that there is hope for the broken because forgiveness is offered to all of us in love. Last week, our third week, we looked at how we recognize that there is hope for the underdog because God and through God, we can do anything. And so in this fourth and final week, we will deal with one of the hardest places we find some of ourselves, where I think at some point, each and every one of us has seen ourselves. Hope for the doubter, hope for the doubter, hope for the doubter. Have you ever heard of a, have you ever heard a piece of information that you say to yourself, no, nah, that's too good to be true? Anybody, anybody? Anybody in the Zoom room, you can put in the chat. Have you ever heard of a, a piece of information where you were like, that ain't right? Whether it's just a price, you know, somebody says, oh, you can get this for 99 cents. What? Right? Or, or somebody says, so-and-so just, and you're like, no, no, they did. Or somebody says you, and you're like, no. Anybody ever experienced that? I think we all have. Maybe it seemed like whatever that piece of news was, was so outlandish that maybe it made you doubt. Maybe it was too good to be true, so it made you skeptical. And so I wanna pose some questions to you. And I need you to decide whether you trust it or whether you doubt it. I'm gonna give you some questions this morning. And I need you to decide whether you're in the sanctuary or 
on the Zoom, whether you trust it or whether you doubt it. All right? Out if we can go to the next screen, please. Here we go. Here's the first question. Did you know that every day on average, 11 banks are robbed in the US? If you trust it, raise your hand. Trust it. If you doubt it, put your hand down. Guess what? It's true. It is true on average. All right, here comes the next one. Next question. Did you know you are more likely to be stung by a bee in windy weather? Trust it or doubt it? If you trust it, put your hand up. You can type it in the chat, trust it. Or either some of you, I can see you on our screens. You can put your hand up too. More likely to be stung by a bee in windy weather. Anybody? No, that's false. <laughs> I don't know if there's any type of scientific data behind that. That's false. All right, here comes the next one. You ready? Did you know that they have square watermelons in Japan because they stack better? Trust it or doubt it? Square watermelons in Japan because they stack better. Trust it or doubt it. See, now that we got through the first two questions, some people are like, ah, trust it or doubt it. Huh? Even in my Zoom, even virtually, trust it or doubt it. Guess what? It's true. Yes, there are square watermelons. And yes, it's because they stack better. All right. I believe here comes our last one. Here comes our last one. Did you know the penguins? can smell toothpaste from a mile away. Trust it or doubt it? What do you think? Trust it or doubt it? Anybody in our Zoom room, trust it or doubt it? What do you think? Mike says yes. Any trust it or doubt it? Yes, it is true. Yes, penguins have a fabulous, a phenomenal sense of smell, yes. Now, penguins don't smell good, but they smell well. Yes, thank you, Bobo. Bo, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Ada, for helping me out with that. Yes, yes, thank y'all, thank y'all. Listen, it is hard to tell what we all trust and it's hard to tell what we doubt, right? It's hard to tell. It's hard, whether it's watermelons or windy bees or banks or, or uh, penguins, right? It's hard to tell what we trust and what we doubt. Doubt has become a common occurrence, really. Many of us um, do, the, do it often. Many of us do it within ourselves, within our families, homes, even at church. There are people that we know well who have failed us and it's caused us to doubt. That's the reason why we doubt because there are people in our lives that have failed us and therefore we turn and then we doubt. There's so much false information shared on social media that it may cause us to doubt everything. And this past season of COVID-19 has caused many to doubt because we wonder where is God in the midst of all of this? Seeing a world that has and is full of hurt and pain makes us doubt where God is or whether God is indeed good. There have been people that have written to me, that have called me, that have said, Pastor Kim, is, is COVID responsible for this? And I'm like, why, why, would we, why, why would we believe in that type of God? Why would God even do that? But there are folks asking that type of question. I'm sure that you've heard that. Some of you might have that coworker or that family member that has also heard that question. And people doubt for all types and kinds of reasons. I would argue that the problem is not the doubt itself, but rather how we handle our doubt. Mishandled skepticism often results in a lack of hope. We certainly are not alone in this struggle. After Jesus's crucifixion, his friends were heartbroken because their hopes and dreams of a new and better world under the rule of God's kingdom had seemingly ended. It was not until Jesus miraculously began to show up in his resurrected form 
that word started to spread among the disciples that perhaps Jesus was alive. You know that story, right? That's the resurrection story that we usually hear around Easter time. Here, Pastor Kim is in October talking about it. There was this one disciple, because all it takes is one. Did you hear me? All it takes is one doubter for doubt to spread like wildfire. It only takes one. There was one, one disciple named Thomas. He refused to believe. Thomas gets a bad rap. He gets a bad rap in the church as some kind of, of uh, stuffy skeptic. He's often viewed as a grumpy old cynic. However, if we are truthful, Thomas comes to this place of skepticism and doubt honestly. He just watched his mentor three years be brutally killed on the cross. The thought of getting his hopes up about a resurrection that would defy all logic may have been just too hard to wrap his head around. He was more than likely looking to protect himself. You ever do that? You ever make a decision based on the fact that you really just want to protect yourself? Or maybe you make a decision, you make a choice, you say something based on the fact that you want to protect someone else. You're protecting that child, you're protecting that sibling, you're protecting that spouse, that partner. And that's why you do the thing, you said that thing that happened. Truthfully, many of us are a lot like Thomas. The doubt that we often express is a way of keeping ourselves from getting our hopes up, that things in our life can improve, that God can answer our prayers or that God loves us. And Thomas didn't wanna believe that Jesus was alive because Thomas didn't want to get let down. Any of us not do something because we just don't want to get let down. We don't want to make that phone call because we don't want to hear no. We don't want to ask that question because we don't want to be let down. We don't want to be rejected. We don't apply for that new promotion. We don't apply for that new job. We don't try to get that mortgage. We don't try to ask that person out. We don't try to have even that conversation because we don't want to hear any type of bad news. No bad news. Think about it. What's the first thing that some people say when given good news? When, say it again, Eileen. Hey, I don't believe it. That's what Eileen just said in the sanctuary. You're right. If somebody says, you got a, I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks. Look, look right here. I've got two people right here shaking their head. I just said, I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks, right? But the immediate reaction is somebody says, yes, hey, you are star of the week at school. You're the employee of the month. Who, me? Think about it. That's the initial reaction. So and so, you you just one employee of the month. Me? Why are you shocked? You've been there every day. You've worked 40, 50 hours a week. You deserved it. Why are we shocked? Specifically when it comes to our kids. Our kids get good grades. Hey, we should celebrate that especially when we hear them express that doubt, that second guessing. We respond first with doubt because we want to protect ourselves. A week after Thomas tells the others that he refuses to believe their reports, Thomas and the disciples, they find themselves locked up in the upper room once again. They are still scared. So that means that for at least two weeks, they're hiding out after Jesus' death, after Jesus' death and resurrection. Two weeks later, they're still cramped in this. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to be with my 12 best friends for two weeks in one room. 
I can only imagine, you think penguins can smell, well, I can only imagine what that room is like. But they're in this upper room, locked. But now the second time when roll is called, Thomas is there. When suddenly, the source of hope arrives. And without much, ex much explanation, Jesus in the flesh shows up in this locked room with the disciples and they must have been shocked. They must have been startled. They must have been scared. They must have been out there just like, because do you hear what the first thing Jesus had to do? This is Pastor Kim saying, whoa, 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 whoa. But the first thing Jesus had to do was say, peace be still. Peace be still. Because Jesus knew. Because we're human. We're human. We're human. Jesus knows that we have doubts. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. And who does Jesus talk to first? Who does Jesus talk to first? Thomas. I love how Jesus goes to Thomas first. Jesus goes to the doubter first. Jesus comes to you and I first. The ones that need it. The one that refused to believe that he was alive. And notice how Jesus addresses Thomas. Jesus doesn't just reprimand him. He doesn't reprimand him at all. I'm sorry. He doesn't reprimand Thomas at all. He doesn't belittle him for his skepticism. He doesn't ridicule him for not being there the first time around. But what Jesus does is what he does for each and every one of you, each and every one of us. Jesus invites. He invites. He says, come here. Come here. Put your fingers in the scars of my hands and in my side. Because Jesus knew we're human and we think with our human minds. And if we don't get the actual $100 bill that Pastor Kim said, we're not going to believe it. Until we see the dollar dollar bills in our paycheck from that job, we're not going to believe it. Until we see the spouse change their behavior, we're not going to believe it. Until we see all the seats, the butts in the pews, we're not going to believe it. We're not going to do that thing. We're going to keep doubting. Jesus knows our humanity. And Jesus anyway speaks to those folks first and says, come here with the invitation. Lean in. There's many folks in our church today, in the church, capital C today, that are struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling. They're struggling filled with, filled with doubt. They've lost hope that Jesus is who he says that he is. And the usual response to those in the church who doubt, some churches, not here, some, is to shame or shun them. You don't believe in God, you don't believe in Jesus, shame on you. I believe that Jesus' response would be a lot different. I believe that he would welcome the questions he would welcome the conversation. He would welcome the wrestling of the doubt. And I think this is because he knows that honest doubt will find honest answers. Honest doubt will find honest answers. So this is the question, Glenside. This is the question. How should the church respond to those that have doubts in the ways that would be on par with Jesus's response to Thomas? How do we as a church respond to doubters? And this is a real question for you as you leave this place, because I never want you to come in. I never want you to leave the same way that you came in. How do you respond to the doubters? The people that didn't make it, not because they had something else to do at 1030 on a Sunday, but the people that say, church, Jesus, God, 
nah, that's not my thing. How do you respond? How are you going to respond? Because we are followers. If we say that we are followers, if we say that we are followers, then that means that we are following, meaning that we're going to be like Christ, right? And so that means that we've got a task to do. So how do we do that thing? First, Gene and I had a great conversation during Bible study. I encourage all of y'all to join at 930. We were online and Jean, she poured into me and blessed me. First, the church should listen. Did y'all think I was going to tell you to go to seminary? <laughs> don't take up those bills. No, don't do that. Listen. How many of you can do that? Can anybody be a listener? Yes? Listen. Listen. The church should listen to those who doubt for what they are not saying as much as for what they are saying. Where does the doubt come from? Where does the hurt come from? Where does that person's pain come from when they say, church is not for me? I talked to a man the other day that he was like that. Church, no, Pastor Kim, forget about it. Just, just he wanted to, to do a wedding and he wanted me to do a wedding out in the park and I had no problem with that. He was just like, I'm not stepping into church. And the more that we listened and we sat together, it came from him being, being beat in the head by church folks. Do you know this Bible passage? Do you know this Bible passage? People always shoving a Bible passage and not just trying to get to know him as a person by just sharing a cup of coffee, by asking him about his day. Just as simple as that. He just didn't wanna hear 50 Bible passages before you even found out how was his day. That's the reason why he didn't like church. So can we be listeners? Do you think we can be listeners? Second, the church should empathize and express compassion. Empathize and express compassion. When people let themselves feel others' pain, hurt, and struggle, then they're better equipped to meet the needs and build bridges, building bridges back to faith and back to hope. Many years ago, I'm gonna tell this story and I'm gonna take my seat. Many years ago in my, in my former church, we had a grandfather with a, a special needs little girl, and he made a request to speak with our senior pastor. And even in the meeting, the man demanded to know how could God exist if his little granddaughter was born with so many challenges? How could God exist if this is what his granddaughter's life was going to be like? That was the grandfather's question. And no matter what answer the pastor gave, the man became angrier and angrier, and eventually he left the church. Eventually he left the church. About a year later, that same man, he was scheduled for surgery and, and, and Pastor Royster, he, he went to the hospital to meet the man. But the man refused any type of prayer because he was still harboring, still resentful. But the pastor prayed anyway. Can we pray for folks anyway? Can we also do that? Jesus was not afraid of Thomas's doubts. God can handle our doubts. We serve a big and mighty God. Just like Jesus wasn't afraid of Thomas's doubts, God is not afraid of our doubts. We should not be afraid of other people's doubts either. And so Glenn Side, as you are a place of hope, I have another question for you. How many of you have shared the good news this past week that Glenn Side is a place of hope how many of you are willing to trust it or doubt it? How many of you have shared that Glenside is a place of trust and hope? Next question, how many of you are willing to share that Glenside is a place of trust and hope? Not to doubt it but that Glenside is, but to trust it and that Glenside is. I'm not asking you to knock on doors. I'm not asking you to call folks. 
If that's what you want to do, I can tell you about that. But I can also teach you how to do that, to go ahead and share what you believe, to share that Glenside is a place of trust and hope with folks so that you feel comfortable with that. So that yes, when I go to Facebook and I see your Facebook page, I see that you have told people about our community meal today at five, that you have told people that this is our 16th year of the Colombian dinner fundraiser, that you shared with people that on October 12th, we're gonna have our live and learn because you've already raised your hand to say that Glenside is a place of trust and hope, yes? So let's tell the world that Glenside is a place of trust and hope and that we don't doubt it. We don't doubt it. Let's start here because hope is here. That's what all four weeks has been about, have been about, that hope is here at 2160, that hope is here that hope is here. To God be the glory. As we meditate on ways in which we will spread hope, again, I encourage each and every one of you to email, call, text, write. It's myself, Pastor Ann Therese. ways in which you would like to be strengthened and how you can spread hope, the hope and the message of Glenside to other folks. Again, whether it's just putting a blurb on your social media, texting someone or reaching out to pray with someone. As we pray today, we want to lift up Pastor Aunt Therese and her family in our prayers. We wanna lift up all of the families that are in ways in which that need our prayers. I wanna lift up um, my parents also in your prayers, Harvey and Eleanor. And we wanna lift up um, the Binkleys as well. Our response for those um, that are praying, we want to say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If you're here in a sanctuary, Andrew has a microphone for you. We will not be able to hear your prayers online or clearly in the sanctuary without a microphone. So please make sure you have a microphone as you share. If you're online, please go ahead and tap, type in the chat any of your prayers so that we may share them collectively. Please, any prayers, prayers for the people. Okay, so we do have one online and one in the sanctuary. Uh, pray, pray for my friend Sue, who's having a very serious back surgery on Wednesday. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. Online Star is praying for people who are grieving the loss of family members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for my um, friend, Mike Aribache, who's being treated for cancer. Um, on his brain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our first responders. We pray for um, all of those that are rushing into situations to help folks whether it be uh, police officers, firefighters, ambulance drivers, um, even our um, 
prison workers, our nurses, all of our first responders, we lift up to you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for all of our children as they are continuing to navigate the education system in the varying ways, whether they are vaccinated or not vaccinated. Those that are in mass, we lift up all of the educators, the administrators, their teachers as well, and the parents as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Star also lifts up that we are praying for those who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, alcoholism, I'm sorry. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And so we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for prayers that are spoken and unspoken. Because, God, you hear them both. God, you delve into the recesses of our hearts, and you know what we need. You know what the people need because these are your people before they belong to us. And so we ask that you cover us, dear God, cover us, dear God, cover us, dear God, wrap your loving arms around us. Whether it's in Harrisburg or Honolulu, dear God, whether it's in Indiana or Iraq, we ask that you go from sea to sea, from nation to nation, dear God. We ask for healing, we ask for healing. We ask that you definitely break every chain, dear God, so that hope resides, not just here at 2160, but hope is in every heart, every household, every mind, because you dwell there, dear God, in your Holy Spirit. So we pray for the prayers that were spoken, and again, all the prayers that were unspoken, because they all belong to you. And collectively, we pray the prayer that was taught to us, and we say together, loving God who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And so as we give our prayers, to God and we listen to each other, we also have an opportunity to give of our resources. And in giving our resources, we can do that online through www.glensideucc.org. That's online. There is a way in which you can give www.glensideucc.org. You can also write a check made payable to Glenside United Church of Christ. You can mail that check to 2160 Wharton Road Lens IPA 19038. If you are here in the sanctuary, there is a basket in the back of the check right there in the center aisle um, where you can physically drop your um, tithe and offering also. We want to make sure that we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your continued and ongoing support of the ministry and the good work that goes on here and that what affects also the wider communities here mm -hmm. at Glenside United Church of Christ. Thank you so much for your support. Mm -hmm. Let's our youth come up and join us this morning. Come on forward. Uh, we're gonna start with a song called Unstoppable God. I first heard this back in the summer and I wish I knew when this mountain in my way is gonna move. Hope it's okay to tell the truth. Just with the theme this morning, sometimes the doubt starts to win. Yeah, I'd be lying if I told you I was anything but weak. Right now, my struggles, all I see. But I'm not giving in. My story will not end in defeat. This is the promise that I'm standing on. Nothing can stop an unstoppable God. So here we are, Karen over there, Cynthia, Josh, Kirsten, Malachi, Katie, Adriana, and Andrew. Thank you for being here this morning to sing for us. Unstoppable God.
make sure that we stay connected. There's multiple ways to stay connected um, through our website at glensideucc.org. We have a Facebook page. We also have Instagram. You can stay connected there. You can get onto our newsletter by going through our um, email at admin at glensideucc.org. You can also just give us a call, 215-887-1819. Let's stay connected. And family are sending. May the peace of God reign in this place. The love of God forever hold you tight. May the spirit of God flow through your life and the joy of God uphold you day and night because this is evident. This is the proof that hope lives here. Amen and amen. changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. I am weary, I need your 
Glory! Amen, amen, and amen. Yes! Thank you so much to our youth choir. Give it up one more time. Yes! Amen. Great job. Great job. Great job. Each and every one of you. Yes. Two beautiful songs. Two beautiful songs sung. Your ministry is strong. Your ministry is strong and appreciated. Yes, indeed. And thank you, Praise Ensemble. Y'all on fire today. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. We are still in need and looking for Sunday school teachers. Um, we had our inaugural Sunday school, which was wonderful for both youth and adults. The youth came out, yes, but we are still in need of Sunday school teachers. If you have that passion, we will train you. If you have even that small desire, there is training. Send an email to admin at glensideucc.org. Our next announcement. The tech team. Sherry, did you want to say more about that? Morning. Um, listen, thank you, everyone. Um, we are in desperate need of tech team members. Uh, it is a lot of work to kind of put together our, our hybrid service at each Sunday morning. So um, you don't need to learn it all. Um, we can simply take you where you are. Um, there are three areas where we need help. One is uh, working the Zoom, which Ada has done today. Um, we could use more people to do that. Uh, another area, which is pretty simple, is working the camera. We could use people to do that. And then lastly, kind of an in-house person. Um, we could certainly use people to do that. Most of the uh, technology is already set up. So it's just a matter of connecting and getting it up and running and coordinating with our music ministry folks to make sure that um, everything is heard. So if you have any interest or time, um, really, again, you know, uh, if we divide the work, then, you know, we don't need, a, we don't need you every week, but uh, periodically would help. So if you have any interest, please reach out to tech team at glensideucc.org. There will be training. Um, we won't just throw you here to the wolves. So you will definitely know what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, if you would like to volunteer to be on our tech team, this is a growing and much needed ministry. And so we would love to have you. Please email techteam at glensideucc.org. Our next announcement we have coming up, Live and Learn, Tuesday, October 12th, 1 p.m., 1 p.m., right here, right here in person, Live and Learn. Tuesday, October 12th at 1 p.m. Make sure that you are here. Make sure you eat first, and then you will be here to have a powerful, powerful discussion. We also have our Columbia annual fundraiser, Saturday, October 23rd, starting at 5. Dana, did you want to say more about that? You need a microphone, please. Oh, there you go. Yeah, sure. Don't talk too long. Can you hear me? Feedback? Yes, go on. anyway. I want to say a few things. I don't want to take a lot of time. So I'll just kind of cut to the chase and just say them. People have asked me, why Columbia? The, the real quick uh, answer to that is that back in the 80s after college, I followed my brother who moved to Medellin, Colombia, where he worked as the director of the Colombian American Cultural Center. And I went down there for four years and fell in love with, with the country. In 2004, my brother Paul died of melanoma and cancer. And we we're looking for a way to kind of continue as a legacy. And through that, you may have read the story about Vacation Bible School here. 
and my friend Pedro and his nephew Marcelo came and talked. And that's where we raised a little bit of money. And then through a friend of mine, we learned about Students of the Light and that was 16 years ago. So that's a little background there. Uh, in regards to Students of the Light, and that's what I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, today. Um, throughout all these years, we used a couple of kids as kind of like the poster children of them. One is uh, Juan Pablo and the other one is uh, Madre de la Luz. Uh, Wilma and I were uh, in Cape Cod this week and I got a letter from a good friend Juan David who does mm -hmm. the photography and the videos when I can't get down there. And uh, anyway, he sent me uh, some letters from the kids and pictures. And what I wanted to do is to share with you a letter from Madre de la Luz who is now 14. Um, many of you, uh, who have been in the church for a long time. You remember a picture of Pastor Beth with Madre de la Luz in her hands when she was just a baby. That was in 2007 uh, when she went down there for the first time with me. Then she went down a second time where she spent a sabbatical. Uh, Mario writes, and I'm saying I want to share this with you because this is what we're doing in a foreign country, which is really important. She writes, I'm 14 years old and I was born on October 25th uh, 2006. I'm in the ninth grade and I want to be a journalist and work with photography. I want to be a great woman with many, with many value, uh, valors. I want to be authentic. I want to be strong and I want to be capable. Since the first day when La Mamita, La Mamita is uh, Maria Felisa. Going back again many years, some of you may have met her because she came from Colombia up here for one of our fundraising mm -hmm. events. And she was able to meet with some of you. And all the kids call her La Mamita. So on the first day when La, when La Mamita picked me up with a lot of love, I knew that she was gonna be uh, my mother. And she is a woman who is strong, intelligent, capable of doing anything that she uh, sets out to do. She is hardworking and has a very uh, noble heart. And I knew, and I know that in good times and bad times, she will be there uh, for us, and she will never, she will never leave us, and she will always be able to help us. This is our mother who cooks for us. She teaches us. She's our doctor. She's our nurse, and she's the person that, uh, whenever we're in need of a solution, is the person who will be there for us. I admire her so much and, and it's, this is the woman who has been able to make us so happy. Um, I'm, in this, I'm in this home and, and I, although I know that my mother did not have, my mother did not uh, have the possibility to take, take care of me, I knew that Mamita was able to do so. This place, the Students of the Light is a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, it's uh, people, that have uh, wonderful hearts, that are happy. And for me, it's, it's, it's a wonderful uh, big family for me. Well, I've learned so many uh, human values, yoga, I've learned to write, I've learned to walk. And most importantly, um, I've learned to never give up despite all the uh, adversary that's been given to me since my childhood. Um, I never, uh, I'm always, I'm always reminded and always aware that there are angels that are taking care of us. And, and I know that La Mamita is always out there looking for donations from wherever she can get them. And she, and I know that she'll never leave us without anything. Sorry about getting emotional for this, but I've been doing it for a while. That's just, uh, some information about how one side 4,000 miles away, we do this fundraiser. We have arepas that nobody knows about, Colombian beans that no one knows about, hot sauce that no one goes about, knows about. But people come out and they support this year in and year out, and we're doing it again. And, and that's, uh, I guess, my petition to you. Real quick, they're on a budget. It's about $2,100 a month. She currently has 37 children down there that she's taking care of. So you can get an idea. We're trying to sell 100 tickets. The twenty dollars a piece, which will raise about two thousand dollars less expenses, so you can get an idea as to you know what our impact's going to be 
plus the donations that are going to be coming in. Um, our event is going to be on the 23rd of October, and I hope you can support it. We have a two level of, of tickets, one which is called the Orchid level, which is a $20 straight for the food. We're going to come up, it's takeout. We're going to ask you to pick a time you can come to uh, pick up your dinner. And then uh, it's not to sit down and fellowship. I'll hopefully we'll do that again. And then we have an emerald level ticket, which is $30 of which $10 is a straight donation. It's a, it's a um, tax deductible donation. And we'll be able to give you all this uh, support that you'll need for your, for your taxes. Um, tickets are on sale online. We've been trying to do kind of this no touch thing, but I made a decision over the week too that we're gonna go back to old school. And if you have a check, I'll take it. If you have cash, we'll take it. But there's no tickets. We're just gonna write down your name and we're gonna ask you the favor to let us know what would be a good time for you to pick up your dinner. Cause we're gonna go from five to 7.30 and every 15 minutes, we're gonna try to dispatch uh, 10 meals. Again, my name is Dana. This is my wife, Wilma. What career the one of us? And thank you. Sorry about taking so long, but anyway, thanks. Amen, amen, amen. Such a powerful and strong ministry. Dana, did you say that there are 30, there is a budget of $2,000 and 37 children? I can hear you. I can hear you. Just, I'll repeat it, what you say. The library book, the students of the light of which we donate 70% and then the library book miles foundation, which we donate 30. But I was talking about students of the light, their monthly budget is about $2,100. Their monthly budget is $2,100. A month. And she is currently with 37 children. With 37 children. In Colombia, Colombia, every country is complicated. I'm not saying that the US is a walk in the park, but Colombia, is very complicated in the, of which it's a country talking about trusting and there's, there's trust and people people to donate down there it doesn't happen like it happens here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the mountain that this woman has to climb on a daily basis is just yeah it's, sometimes it's really difficult to get your head around yes so, so thank you for sharing that with us we absolutely can tell that this is um, a passion of yours as well as wilma um, and that the, the compassion is there and that Glenside has the compassion also. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we support this because this is our 16th year and that we will support it as well. Um, I know I've got my two tickets at the Emerald level already. And so um, I encourage each and every one of us also to get our Emerald tickets as well. Um, and we'll do that. I believe our next slide, um, and again, thank you, Dana. Our next slide is the Zachariah Walker Racial Justice Symposium, which is coming up October 23rd, 24th. Registration is already live. Make sure you go to the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference website for that registration. If there is, I know I wanted to go and I think there's at least three of us, there is a group rate. So I think we need at least two more people to apply for the group rate. So there's three of us right now currently interested. So four, so there's four people interested, five, yes. Yeah. So I think we have a group. So if we can get more, perhaps we can get the rate down. Let me know, send me an email, pastor at glensideucc.org so that we can also attend this wonderful, um, and it's online October 23rd, 24th. Amen, amen. Any other announcements? There's a question, is it in the chat? If you go to the website, you will find out the exact cost. So please go to the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference website. It is sponsored by the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference. And so they will have all of the specifics. If you email me then later on this week, I will be able to get you those specific details. Any other announcements? Here comes Jess, Jess needs a microphone. Good morning, everybody. We're doing our community meal today, um, but it is going to be a little different, a little fun because we are going to be doing um, a cookout. And so I have basically the food and would just love to have some hands to help out. So um, this community meal teaches me just about every month that um, to trust and believe because I was so sure it was going to rain and here we are. It's not going to rain. It might be cloudy, but it's not going to rain so we can do our cookout. So um if you could be here around four i'll see you then and thank you so much 
Community meal cookout. Yes, I love it. Any other announcements? We are still recording. We're going to officially end our official worship recording. Any other announcements, whether online or here live in the sanctuary? Any other announcements? Again, I want to say thank you to Andrew for serving as our worship leader. Thank you so much, Ada, for our digital hospitality host. Thank you, Sherry, for serving as our tech team. Thank you, KD, as well. Thank you, Judy, and the Praise Ensemble. Thank you so much, Jess, for being also a part of our tech team and our hospitality ministry. Thank you to each and every one of you, whether you're in the Zoom room or live here in the sanctuary. Please come back next week at 1030, where we worship here at Glenside United Church of Christ in spirit and in truth. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and all week long. Tell somebody that hope is here. Bye, everybody.